Hello and good evening. This is Pastor T from the Spring Hill Church. Thank you so much for joining us for our Word and Worship celebration tonight. We are grateful to God that He's given us this opportunity to share in the Word of God together. If you're joining us from somewhere around the Gainesville region, somewhere else in the state of Florida, maybe somewhere else around the United States or even around the globe, we have prayed for, planned for, and prepared for the opportunity to share together in the Word of God, and we're praising God that we have this chance. Do us a favor, hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe on whatever platform you're joining us from, whether it's our springhillgnv.org website or if it's from uh, our YouTube channel, we are so grateful that God has blessed us with the chance to share together in the Word of God. Uh, let's pray together and uh, then we'll move into the lesson. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. The whole earth is full of thy glory. Tonight, God, we come saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your grace. You give us what we don't deserve. Thank you for your mercy. You hold back what we do deserve. Thank you for your love, your unmerited love that is shown towards us even before we loved you. You first loved us, and we're so grateful. We pray, God, that you would forgive us of our sins. We pray, our Father, that you would meet us all at our point of need. Pray, our Father, in Jesus' name, that you'd open our minds and help us to understand, soften our hearts and help us to spiritually receive. And Lord, we pray for transformation as we study together through your divine and holy word. We pray that you change us. Those that are not saved, save them by the power of your word. Glory to God. Those that uh, need to walk according to the, and walk worthy of the vocation to which we have been called and walk worthy according to the word of God. We pray that you sanctify us all. And Father, we pray for those that are struggling, those that have anxieties, those that have hurts, and uh, those that have burdens, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would strengthen us all, lift the burdens, and take away the fears, doubts, and the pressures of this life so that we may lean and trust upon you. Father, we thank you so much for this time together, and we pray that it is fruitful. These are your servants' prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love the Lord Jesus and I love his word. Would you join me please in his word in the book of Hebrews chapter number one, and then we'll also look at Hebrews chapter number two. Uh, we have concluded our exposition of uh, Psalm 119. Psalm 119 looks at the word of God in its total and it's totally focused upon glorifying, praising, and honoring God for the word that he has given and for the blessing of his word. We're gonna continue our study uh, just a little while longer uh, in what is known as the doctrine of the Bible. We're gonna continue looking at and studying and understanding the word of God because I believe and I know based on God's word that God's word is precious and it is important in our lives. I was recently in a uh, workshop and uh, the facilitator asked a question about uh, the health of the church. And, uh, and I'll, I'll share uh, next week uh, my answer uh, and my response to his question. But let me ask you all a question. Let me start off by, by posing these questions to you. Uh, number one, how many of you, uh, how many of you ate food last week? How many of you ate food last week? How many of you ate food last week? Just go ahead and put a comment in the comment section. Yes, yes, I ate food last week. I ate food, I ate food. Uh, then let me ask, how many of you watched uh, a total of 30 minutes of television last week? How many of you watched a total of 30 minutes of television last week? Just go ahead and put it in. Yes, 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 or no. Some of you maybe uh, are people that don't watch TV at all and, or were too busy. So just yes or no, yes or no. Did you eat food? Did you watch television? Yes or no? All right, so now that you have those logged in, let me ask you this third question. This is the third question. So the first one was, how many of us ate food last week? Number two, how many of us watched at least 30 minutes of television last week? Now here's the third question. How many of us read at least one chapter in the Word of God last week? How many of us read at least one chapter, just one, in the Word of God last week? All right, just put your answer there. Put your answer there. Don't be ashamed. Don't be shy. But I want you to consider this. We need food, uh, natural food, to live in the natural, to live in the flesh, to live in these bodies. Otherwise, we get weak, we get sick, and we die. Well, so is the word of God, the bread that comes from heaven. It feeds our spiritual soul. So if we took time to feed our natural bodies last week, but we didn't take time to feed our spiritual person that's on the inside and feed the spirit of God in us, then what happens to the spirit that lives within us if we don't eat? It gets weaker. It gets, he gets weaker and it gets, gets uh, less uh, powerful. 
And then the other question was, how many of us watch 30 minutes of television? How many of us watch 30 minutes of television? Well, it only takes about 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes, to read one chapter in the Bible. 15 to 30 minutes to read one chapter in the Bible. So if we could take the time to uh, be uh, impacted and affected and to, to take in the culture of the world, why can't we carve out 30 minutes to feast on and to take in the word of God so that we may view our world through the word of God? Friend, let me share this with you. And it's not meant to make you feel bad. It's just meant to make you think. These questions are not meant to make you feel guilty. These questions are meant to cause us to think about how important the word of God is in our lives. The Bible says very clearly that my people perish. God speaks of the, the nation of Israel and it has spiritual implications uh, today even for the local New Testament church believer. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Well, what is that knowledge? A knowledge of the word of God. It had grown to the place in the life and in the history of Israel that they had stopped going to the temple. They had ceased from reading and studying the word of God and it caused moral decline in the nation of Israel and it ultimately caused them to be taken away in the Babylonian exile and in the Syrian exile uh, uh, in their captivities. And I believe that we should consider that, that God still calls us to take in his word and to be led and guided by the word of God. Let's see what God's word says in the book of Hebrews uh, chapter number one. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to, unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And then let's transition over to Hebrews chapter two. Look at Hebrews chapter two, verses one through four. Hebrews chapter two, verses one through four. The word of God says there, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense or reward of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord? and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, meaning the disciples, which became the apostles. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. According to his own will. So tonight we're looking at the revelation and the Bible, the, or revelation and the Bible. Revelation and the Bible is what we're looking at uh, in our text tonight. The word revelation uh, means to reveal something or to make it clear or to make it known. Uh, and in theology, God's revealing himself to humanity without the revelation of God and his divine plan of redemption that is offered in the scriptures, we would be as blind beggars stumbling in the dark trying to find our way to get some bread in the middle of the night. But because we have the word of God, we are afforded bread that comes from heaven that feeds our souls until we want no more. Moreover, God's word allows us to see him, to know him and to understand him in a way that we never would be able to except for the word of God. Revelation. Let's talk about this word revelation, because uh, many people kick it around and we don't understand uh, and we aren't exact and we aren't. Uh, uh, very clear about our language. Revelation means the unveiling of something previously hidden so that it may be seen for what it is. Uh, all revelation is supernatural in that it has God for its source and truth as its end. God is the source of revelation and truth is its ultimate goal and end. In Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, the word of God says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that they may do all the words of this law. It is God's 
uh, authority and it's under God's plan to reveal and to show us the things that we need to see and understand about him and his plan of redemption. May I uh, ask you to look again in Hebrews chapter one. The Bible says God, it, this is the, the great authority and the sovereign of the universe who at sundry times, that means at different intervals of time, at different spaces and places of time, and in diverse manners, in different ways, he spoke in times past unto the fathers and to the prophets. What are some of the ways that God spoke? Sometimes God spoke uh, to Moses in the midst of a bush that was on fire that would not be consumed. At some times, the angel of the Lord came and spoke. At some time, it was simply the voice of God uh, that re uh, Genesis chapter one says, or Genesis chapter two, excuse me, and the voice of God was heard walking, or Genesis chapter three, and the voice of God was heard walking in the garden. These are different ways. Sometimes God spoke through the prophets. Sometimes God spoke uh, in a quiet whisper, but in various ways, God was speaking, God was showing, God was revealing himself and his divine truth to all humanity. And he spoke unto the fathers. What fathers? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, Abraham uh, uh, received the vision of the Lord or received instruction of the Lord from the angel of the Lord to take his son, his only son, Isaac, and sacrifice him on the altar. And there on the altar, the angel of the Lord cries out and say, uh, while Isaac is on the altar, the angel of the Lord cries out to, to uh, Abraham and says, stay your hand. There's a ram in the thicket. God is just speaking in different ways. And, uh, and he did it at different times and by the prophets and by the prophets. The prophets were God's mouthpieces to uh, his people about the pending judgment that was coming on them, that, that uh, they would be judged because of their falling away from their belief in him. So he says uh, here in Hebrews that God has been talking consistently and constantly, and he's been opening up and revealing truth. One of the things I need us to understand about Revelation is that it's, it's God's plan, and in God's ways, he opens up and allows us to see the truth of who he is. We wouldn't know and wouldn't understand God if God didn't reveal himself to us. And then in verse uh, number two, half in these last days, uh, what, what days? After, after, after the closing of the Old Testament, the last book is Malachi, 400 year period uh, span. God didn't open up any new revelatory knowledge. He, he didn't speak at all. He's, he's quiet uh, and silent. And then finally, Jesus uh, comes uh, at the declaration of the angels that were crying out, Hosanna, and glo uh, glory to God and, and, and saying goodwill and peace uh, to all men. And so it's God now speaking in the dispensation and in the time of the New Testament. So it's God at work again. And this is, this is the unfolding progressively of God's divine truth. So, so let's continue to explain revelation. So revelation of God to man falls into two basic categories. It's two basic categories. There's what you call general revelation and then there's special revelation. There is general revelation and then there is special revelation. General revelation is revealing of knowledge of God's existence, God's greatness, God's sovereignty. That means his rulership that is shown through the natural world and that is available to all people. Creation is one of the tools that God uses to reveal himself, his existence, his glory, his power, his sovereignty. God uses creation in order to reveal himself. In Psalm, uh, Psalm number 19, verses one through six, Psalm number 19, verses one through six, the Bible says the heavens, listen to him, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night shows knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for a son, which is a bridegroom coming unto the chamber and, and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. 
His going forth is from the end of the heavens and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. He says every time you go out and see the sun rise in the east and set in the west and feel the warmth of that sun on you as the day progresses. And God knows we've been feeling the warmth of that sun. He said all of that is going towards declaring, celebrating and honoring the glory of God. Then the history of humanity and the history of the world is also another example of God's existence and God revealing himself to man, showing, hey, hey, I'm real and I exist. The Lord, uh, Psalm number nine, verse 16 says, Psalm number nine, verse 16 says, the Lord is known by the judgment which he executes and the wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Uh, Selah, says the Lord. He says, when you look at human history and you see that those that try to do evil things, uh, God will turn around and bring judgment upon them. But then, hey, there's also some historical facts that even some things that people meant for evil, God turned around and made for good. I just read and, and was just uh, meditating on that story of of. Joseph down in Egypt and how his brothers had sold him into slavery. And as you look at the arc of his life, that even in the ups and in the downs of his life, uh, through it all, God is walking with him and God is working with him. And friend, when you look at human history, you see God at work. When you look at the history of your life, you can see God at work. And so God reveals himself even through that, uh, those means. But then there's the conscience. That's our thinking and that's our uh, uh, that's what we sometimes call that sweet, small voice on the inside that tells us when we're doing wrong. Romans chapter two, verse 15, Romans chapter two, verse 15 says this, which shows the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Friend, have you ever done something and nobody had to tell you it was wrong? The, the Lord just put such a conviction on you. The Lord just put such a guilt on you. The Lord just uh, uh, brought such correction on you in your mind and in your heart. Well, guess what? That's revelation of God. That is the revelation of God, that there's a bit of God consciousness in all of us. And, and what happens is we know we need God. We know when we do right. We know when we do wrong. And what happens is as sin takes over our lives, the, our conscience is seared with a hot iron. But in our natural state, in our natural state, hey, we, we know when we're right and know when we're wrong because God put a God consciousness in us. And that's what prompts us to want to accept and receive the Lord's salvation because we recognize that we're wrong. It's the world that tries to talk us out of our wrongness. It's the world that tries to excuse our wrongness. But in our natural state, we know we're, we know we're wrong. And we know that we've, we've erred and sinned against God because God put a consciousness in us. What is that? That is the revelation of God that is showing up. General revelation. Now, uh, general revelation offers a clear view of the existence of God, the power of God, and our need for God. It shows our, uh, uh, the existence of God, general revelation does, shows the existence of God, he is real. The power of God, he has all power, all authority. Psalm number eight, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all of the earth. But then it shows our need for God. We don't just want God, we need God. Now the question I need to ask is why can't people be saved just from looking at nature. Why can't people just be saved? Why can't we go out and hear the birds chirping and hear their melody and the great, the sweet hymns and praise that they sing unto God early in the morning? Why can't man be saved by feeling the mist uh, in the air uh, early in the morning when it's a normal morning, not like the heat we've been experiencing and, and be baptized in the, in the reality of God? Why can we not look up into the azure blue sky, look at the pretty white pillowy clouds? Why can't we look at the greenness in the trees and in the grass and understand that God in his, in his perfect wisdom and will and power has orchestrated all of this tapestry and, uh, and this painting, uh, this canvas of glorious and amazing colors? And why can't we just throw up our hands and be saved and say, God, I need you, Lord, save me. And I'll tell you why. 
it's because creation has been impacted by the, the uh, ramifications of sin, that even as beautiful as our creation is, it has been impacted by sin. And so even the sin in creation stops us from really understanding and really knowing and being saved by God. Howard Thurman, Howard Thurman, who is a celebrated theologian among uh, black liberation theologists, uh, uh, I don't necessarily uh, agree. Matter of fact, I don't not necessarily. I do not agree with Howard Thurman at all because Howard Thurman uh, was a pantheist. He grew up in Daytona Beach, Florida, uh, went off to school and, and had a, an amazing career and he celebrated the world over. But Howard Thurman's challenge was was that he said that he found more God in nature than he found in the Bible and in church and that he understood more about God from nature than he understood from the Bible and from church. And friend, that just doesn't work because when you look at nature, you look at uh, the ramifications of sin. When you look at roses, you see the roses have thorns and they prick your fingers. Well, that didn't come until after sin. When you look at the beautiful seas, although they are wonderful and glorious, at some point the seas have uh, hurricanes on them. When you look out into the, the plains lands in the, mid, uh, in the Midwest and you see those flat plains with the beautiful grass that goes for miles and miles and, and the wheat fields that go for miles and miles, but you recognize and see that uh, at some points the tornadoes will blow and will come and wipe out everything in their path. You see that yes, nature is beautiful, but nature has been impacted by sin. And so therefore we can't uh, really understand the greatness and glory of God and be saved just by looking at nature and creation. That's pantheism that says that there's a little bit of God in everything. No, God's glory is shown throughout all of, of the world and throughout all of nature and time, but we can't really understand God. So that's general revelation, but then there's something called special revelation. There's something called special revelation. Special revelation is this is God's direct intervention into the human experience in order to lead his children back to him. This is where God specifically intervenes so that he may cause us to turn to him. What are some special or specific times of revelation? Sometimes God reveals himself through dreams. Sometimes it's through dreams. Remember, uh, that young man I just mentioned, Joseph, he had several dreams. And what was that? That was God revealing himself and revealing his truth through visions, through visions. God uh, sometimes used visions in the Old Testament, especially to show himself uh, to those uh, that needed to see the impact of his glory. Then uh, through audible voices, sometimes God just literally spoke. Uh, remember, Moses is standing at the burning bush and the bush is on fire but would not be consumed. God is speaking. Remember, Moses is at the Red Sea with the children of Israel and God speaks and tells him to stretch out your rod and the, the waters uh, of the sea uh, recede and are separated. So God speaks sometimes in a voice, then uh, sometimes through angels, through angels. Uh, remember, there are several times in the Old Testament where angels are, or, the, or the angel of the Lord is speaking. I just my mind went directly to that instance in uh, Genesis where Jacob, who has lived a horrible life of tricking and deceiving everyone he comes in contact with. He tricks his brother. He tricks his daddy. He tricks his uncle slash father in law. He is just dishonest all the way around. And one day the angel of the Lord confronts him uh, with with uh, the realities of his life. And Jacob has to wrestle with that angel. And the angel of the Lord said, what do you want? Uh, you must let me go for the day breaking it breaketh. And Jacob responded, I will not let you go until you bless me. So God reveals himself even through angels. But I'm grateful that our text that we've chosen tonight shows us that God reveals himself through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ and what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Hebrews chapter two, verse two said, uh, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which first began to be spoken 
by the Lord. It is God's holy word through Jesus Christ. But then it's been completed in the scriptures. So Jesus began it, gave it to the apostles and the apostles gave it in the doctrinal truths that are given to us in the holy scriptures. And this is special revelation. Second Peter chapter one, verses three through four says, according as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby we are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. By this, ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Thank God for his revelation that he gives us. Now, now, let me let me share this last thing with you is that revelation and inspiration are two different things and revelation and illumination are two different things. Revelation makes truth known while inspiration provides uh, for its inerrant recording. So revelation makes the truth known, but inspiration Make sure that we get it without error. That's why we say the word of God is inerrant. Then the Bible has revelation, but the entire Bible is given to us by inspiration. So all of the Bible reveals God, but it has been given to us through inspiration. And God breathed on men to share his divine truth. But then not only that. Uh, uh, we also want to see that not only do we have revelation, but also illumination. And so what happens with illumination is that God shows himself or illuminates by the Holy Spirit our understanding and helps us to see what has always been there, but we couldn't see it before. Why? Because our eyes were darkened and our knowledge was darkened. And so the word of God illuminates, illuminates. The word of God is inspiring and the word of God illuminates, but also God has disclosed his word through the prophets, Moses, uh, through Moses and the prophets and then through the apostles. And so there's a difference between revelation, illumination and inspiration. I hear people all the time now talking about I got a new revelation. Well, here's a problem with that. If you go here to the book of Revelation. It says amen, period. Just go right there. And it says amen, period. Why? Because God doesn't have anything new to say. He doesn't have anything new to say. Everything you and I need to know uh, at this point in our, in our sojourn and in our walk with God, we can find it in the Bible. Let me just ask one question. Why does God need to give us a new revelation? When I asked the question at the start of the time, how many of us read one chapter in the Bible last week? We haven't even dealt with all of this, much less needing a new revelation. So don't go around saying, well, I got a new revelation from God. No, no, no. God has given us his revealed truth and he's shown us who he is through his holy word. We just need to read it, study it, learn it, take it in. Uh, and by God's inspiration, he gave us the word inerrant, infallible and eternal. And by illumination, the Holy Spirit will help us to see the truths that God has in there for us. God bless you. We'll see you next week. And we're going to talk next week about revelation and illumination a little further about how God has shown himself to us. And what does it really mean to have God's holy revelation? God bless you. Walk in victory and share your faith with someone. Let them know that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. And by that alone, we can be saved. I love you. Take care.